Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise, I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm here to talk about human hair wig buying. I'd like to give you guys a resource and talk a little bit about the challenges with buying human hair wigs, what I've learned, and maybe some helpful tips if you're in the market or think you may be in the market to purchase human hair in the future. So if you wanna know more about this topic, then stick around. Human hair wig buying is so challenging, way more in my opinion than synthetic for a couple of reasons. Number one, the price point. Human hair wigs are expensive. There are some budget friendly options out there, but even budget friendly is expensive. Uh, especially if you're looking to, to get high quality human hair that's going to last you a long time. A lot of the retailers out there are small independent boutique sellers who may not have any employees at all. They do all the work themselves, ship out themselves, and provide customer service themselves. Some maybe have a, one or two employees who help with customer service, but they're the only one who actually works on the wigs. Let me give you an example. First of all, before I give you this example, I'd like to just tell you, I have a document linked in the description that will, I started a list of just wig retailers in general, both synthetic and human hair, so that if you're wondering where you can purchase a wig, you can go to that list and take a look at, at what I've curated so far. It's a live document and I'm constantly updating it when I learn about new resources. So I would recommend that you bookmark it so that you can visit it regularly to see what the updates are. And I also have a, a tab, it's a Google Sheets. So it's like a spreadsheet. I also have a tab of human hair customization experts. They can actually help fix your wigs. I will talk about that in a future video, but today I just want you to know that that resource exists. All right, so my first example of a small boutique seller that can be really difficult to get a wig from is Stacked Hair. So this is a wig from Stacked. Allie is the owner and the wig artist. At this time, she is the only one who colors and customizes these pieces. I think she has gotten some help with customer service, uh, but she, it's very hard to get a wig from Stacked because she is so incredibly popular. She does such good work and she doesn't carry a ton of pieces. So this is kind of the, the one end of the spectrum of wig purchasing that is the most difficult. Uh, they sell out really, really quickly. So I purchased this piece from Allie, um, I don't even know now, eight months ago or so. And I was so lucky to be able to snag her. So Allie does wig drops two days a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central Time. She posts the wigs that are going to drop prior to it going live, sometimes the day before, sometimes just the morning before. So you do have an opportunity to view what's going to be for sale, which is huge. It, she didn't used to do that. And so you wouldn't know what was gonna post until it went live at 7 p.m. And they sell out within an hour or two hours most of the time. So she is hard to get a wig from and so popular. And so this, a situation like this can cause people to make impulse purchases. You're so afraid you're going to miss out and that it's going to be gone and you can't take the time that you need to really assess whether or not it's the right piece for you and you buy it anyway. That's one extreme and it's a difficult, difficult journey. And I have heard from so many women who've made, not just with Allie and Stacked, but other retailers who've made these impulse purchases because they were just afraid it was gonna sell out and then it turns out it wasn't right for them. Most of these human hair retailers do have restocking fees for returns. Some do not even take returns, but most that do have a restocking fee. So while you can return it, there is a cost to that and it can become quite expensive if that happens to you. And another option when it comes to human hair wig purchases is purchasing a custom piece. 
So there are some retailers out there that will do custom pieces for you. Lose Wigs is a great example of that. So this is a piece from Lose Wigs. Um, she puts LW on her, ta on her tags. And Luz is another kind of small boutique retailer, but she's growing. She's growing and she's definitely expanded over the past year. Now, Luz wigs used to be like stacked where she would do wig drops and the wigs would sell out pretty quickly. Now that she's grown a little bit, she offers customization and she has a custom order form on her website. She is still small enough that she can't have that up all the time. When she gets sort of the max of custom orders that she can manage at any given time, she does pull that custom order form down. So if you watch this video and you go to lose wigs and the custom order form isn't there, just know that it might be a period where she's trying to catch up on orders and that it will be back. And you can always message them to find out. Now, what I love something that Luz started doing late last year that I am absolutely in love with is carrying stock colors. While Allie from Stacked makes one of a kind pieces. So this one, if you wanted one just like this one, you might not be able to get it. You might be able to message her and tell her that you love the color of the wig that Denise Sheets has. Could she recreate that? She did actually name this Denise. Even though she didn't give it to me, she didn't give me a discount, I had to stock her site and purchase it at 7 p.m. on the dot, just like anyone else. She did name it Denise because I gave her inspiration for the color, um, but I digress. Um, so whereas Allie, they're all one of a kind, Lou's wigs has started to carry stock colors. So for example, this wig right here is called Peyton. This color is called Peyton. So on the Luz Wigs website, if a wig has a name, that's a stock color. If it has a number, it's a one of a kind that was just on a whim was created. So it's wonderful to know that you could go to Luz Wigs if you see a color that you love on someone who shared it, you can order it in that color. But you do have to remember that there's always going to be variability in color. There's just no way somebody can duplicate. I mean, when human beings are doing this and they're not done by machine, there will be variability. So this wig, while that color is patent, there may be some variability in how thick the money pieces are or how thick the highlights are. But in general, this is the color scheme called Peyton. So that's another example. Uh, so you've got your small boutique that only carry one of a kind, and then you've got, you know, kind of the next level up where there are some stock colors. So you can generally get a close repl replication of a color that you really loved. Another example would be Deborah's Enchanted. Deborah's, I just recently reviewed a wig for Deborah and I purchased the piece on my head about two weeks ago from her. So she carries wavy pieces in addition to straight pieces and I just am a curly girl at heart. And when I saw the wavy piece and she was having an anniversary sale and all of her wigs were 30% off, I took the leap and purchased it. Now this wig comes in a stock color that she carries. I'm forgetting the number, I think it's 6, 12, 14, but I'm not positive. I'll make sure I put it in the description in case you're curious what this color is. But Deborah is, does carry stock colors and so she often has wigs in this color. It's one of her most popular colors, I, I would imagine, because she usually carries it. So you might not be able to find the exact style, but you will be able to find the color. And that's the other thing I want to mention is when you're purchasing human hair wigs, most of the time you are going to have to customize it for you. It is very, very rare that you will find all the variation of cuts and styles like you can with synthetic. So one complaint I hear a lot from my fellow wig sisters is it seems like nobody carries shorter human hair. All you can ever find are long. And that really is true. Every now and then you'll get lucky and you'll find a chin length bob or a short layered cut. Very rarely though, because human hair wigs in general are meant to be customized. So you purchase the piece 
and then you take it to a stylist and have them customize the cut for you. That is generally how it goes with human hair. So if you are looking for something very specific style-wise, my recommendation is to try to find something at least close in color and density and with the cat features that you like and then plan to have it customized once you get it. I know that's really scary and most of us don't know a stylist in person who works on wigs. I know I don't, but there are lots of women who do this online. I have that in that document I mentioned and they do it so often that they've become experts. They can have a Zoom meeting with you to learn what you're looking for, see what you look like, get your head shape and all of your measurements. So if you want bangs, they'll get your, the measurements that will matter on the length of the bangs. So it is very, very, uh, it, it is absolutely uh, uh, viable, there's the word I couldn't think of, to have someone customize your wig for you who you never actually meet in person. So. That's the other piece that I think is super important to remember is because the supply can be such a challenge, we really should set our expectations around getting a wig that has almost everything we want and then realize that we can get it customized by a well, style. On the other end of the spectrum, we have retailers that carry all stock pieces and they don't really have these one-off, one-of-a-kind pieces. An example of that is Milano wigs. I have two Milanos. Neither one of them are full wigs. I hope to have one of their wavy Victorias someday. But for now, I've got the, a wavy human hair. It's all human hair. Um, band fall. It's a headband wig. I wear this all the time. I have tons of videos on this. I have an update video that I recently posted. And I also have a hat fall, which is a hat wig that I love so much. The quality of their pieces is amazing. And what I love about Milano, I consider them a beginner wig wear friendly company. And this is why. Not only because they carry stock pieces so that you can see the piece that you're going to get and you can add a bit of customization. You can choose cap size. You can choose to have them, um, you know, modify the length, but they do consultations with you. So do some of the small small ones as well, like I believe Luz does a consultation. But Milano will do a video consultation. They'll learn about what you're looking for and make sure that you're getting the perfect piece for you. And so a lot of the time when somebody is a new wig wearer, while I recommend Allie at Stacked wholeheartedly, I don't always recommend her to a brand new wig wearer who's looking to make their first purchase because her wigs are hard to get. They sell out so quickly and a new wig wearer just isn't in a position to make those quick decisions. I usually recommend Milano because they do have a wide variety of styles and they do those consultations. Folia is another that is out there, but they're very, very high end. I think the cheapest wig you can get from them is like $2,500 um, or $3,000, but they are similar to Milano where they have stock pieces and then you can choose colors and cap sizes within that style. They do consultations. They have a fit kit that you can get from them. They'll send it out to you and they'll with um, their different cap styles and a couple of lengths so that you can actually hold something in your hand and try it on your head to see if it will work for you. So there's lots of options when it comes to buying wigs. And then I guess I, I shouldn't, I can't um, neglect to mention the major synthetic retailers that carry An example of that is John Renault. This is a carry from John Renault. So John Renault is a well-known major wig manufacturer. They mainly carry uh, synthetic, but they do have some human hairstyles. So Carrie is a human hair wig. This is actually Carrie Light. And so I don't have a ton of experience with human hair from the major manufacturers. I have a few Carries. That's the only human hair I've tried from John Renault. I um, but. Raquel Welch carries some human hair. Uh, Renee of Paris in their Orchid line just released some human hair wigs, which I reviewed. 
And so that's a viable option as well. And, and you know, any retailer that carries synthetics like name brand wigs, Wig Studio One, wigs.com, uh, will carry those human hair wigs we'll as well. say that the caps are going to be a lot more familiar to those of us who are synthetics transitioning to a John Renault cap, whereas there's a lot of variation in the cap styles on some of these human hair wigs, which I will get into in a future video. So that's really it. I really just wanted to introduce the topic of human hair, of purchasing human hair wigs, some of the challenges that come with purchasing. I wanted to tell you about that resource so that you can always go to that document. If you bookmark it in your browser, you can always go to it and get the most updated version so as i add or remove retailers um then it will be a good resource for you just a disclaimer yeah. on that document i have done research prior to listing anyone on there it's either a retailer that i have personal experience with or that comes generally recommended by the wig wearing community in, I'm in a lot of Facebook groups and I, you know, I ask people what they think and I pay attention to what people are saying about some of these retailers. And I've been able to find some good reviews on that retailer. I, I want you to proceed with caution. I don't want you to look at that list and think every single one of those retailers is highly recommended by Denise and then hold me responsible if you have a bad experience. I did my best to list people that are trustworthy and that have a good reputation. I didn't list anyone that I couldn't find any reviews on or that I nobody is familiar with. And if you've had a poor experience with one of the people on that list, I'm happy to receive that feedback if you want to let me know, but please don't be offended if I don't remove them from the list. Every single retailer, every person in the world has upset at least one other person. In the case of retailers, they've maybe upset a handful of people. They may have a hundred fans and three people who are upset with them. I'm not going to remove a retailer from the list because I get one piece of bad feedback. I'm so sorry if you have a bad experience with someone, but I've tried to do my due diligence to make sure that they're worthy of being on the list. If on the other hand, I have someone listed and I hear from a lot of people who've had bad experiences, I may remove them from the list. This is just meant to be a guide, not, uh, you know, Angie's list or something like that. So just keep that in mind. I do felt, I did feel I need to put that disclaimer out there, but you also deserve to know how someone got on that list in the first place. And it really was because of their overall good reputation in this community. This was helpful. Please know that I'm going to have other videos coming soon on this topic. My next video, I'm going to cover some of the things you need to know about cap construction, plucking, hairline and, and uh, part line, bleaching the knots, some of the things that there is wide variability from retailer to retailer so that when you're looking to make a purchase, you know what you're getting yourself into. So if that would be interesting to you, then stay tuned. That will be coming soon. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not already subscribed, I hope that you will. Uh, I really am here to support all of my sisters, whether because of hair loss or just because you want to wear wigs and give you good information. I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for being here. Mm -hmm.